Hello, hello, hello. My name is Daryl. I'm a designer from Lots Lab. And in this video, we are going to be making this interactive asset. So we're going to be covering topics such as how do you take your Figma designs to Lots Lab? How do you animate them in Lots Lab? And lastly, how do you make them interactive in Lots Lab? So yeah, I'm going to be sharing the file for this one as well so that you could follow along with me as I do this tutorial. That being said, let's get started. Oh, wait, let's not. Let me do one more. And yeah, let's get started. All right, so cool. In our Figma editor, I have my design and I have the plugin open. The name of the plugin is called Lots Lab Figma Tsalati Animation. And once you have the plugin open, what we basically need to do at this point, or the only thing that we need to do at this point, is just to select our design that we want to animate. And we got two options. You could either open it in Lots Lab or copy the design. For now, I'm just copy it and head over to our Lots Lab editor. And as you can see, I already have it prepared, but ignore that one for now and let's space our Figma design. And there we go. We have it pasted. It's basically one-to-one -to, -one to what we had in our Figma from looks down to how it's being structured. And there's actually multiple ways that you could import your designs in Lossy Lab. You could import it via images as an SVG or you could import an entire Lottie. But I highly recommend using the Figma plugin if you want to preserve your layer names and your, your layer structure. So yeah, that's it for step one. That's how you take your Figma designs to Lossy Lab. You open a plugin, you hit copy, you paste, and boom, you're done. And let's move on to the next part, the fun part. How do you animate things inside of Lots of Lab? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You simply just need to go to animate mode and over to this mode, there's only one rule. Anything you change in a specific point in time will be added as a keyframe. Whoa, wait a sec, what's a keyframe? I'm a designer, I don't know what keyframe is. Well, a keyframe essentially is just a marker that lets you define properties in a specific point in time. Or as I like to describe it, it's kind of your way of saying, at this point in time, I want this to happen. And to better explain that, I'll do a quick sample over here. I'll create a random shape, head over to animate mode. And at this time, I want it to rotate. I want this to happen. I want this rotation to happen. There we go. As you can see, a keyframe is being added. And if we expand this, we see the property that's being animated. For this one, it's the rotation. I'll move to a different point in time, move the position. And as you can see, the position keyframes are being automatically added. Move to a different point in time and change the color. There you go. As you can see, we've changed the color and the keyframes for color are also being added. And basically this is the only concept that you need to keep in mind when doing when animating things inside of Lotsilab. And yeah, with this concept in mind, I think we're pretty much good to go to animate the actual asset instead of just like a random square. So I'm gonna just delete this one for now. And before animating, let's inspect once again our animation. So over here, let's see, it opens, floats for a little bit, closes, it opens, floats for a little bit, then closes. All right, cool. Let's do that one. Let's select our artboard and turn on animation mode. And then one second, I want this main piece to stay as it is right now. So I'll add a keyframe without changing anything because I just want this same look at one second, but at zero seconds, I want it to close. So I'm gonna adjust the layers, bring them down. All right, let me just use my arrow keys to do some fine tweaks. Bring this down as well. Bring this down. And bring this last layer down. Oops. There we go. Amazing. So if we play this, aha, we have our very first animation in Lots Lab. Congratulations. But before moving on, let's adjust the ease in quickly. Set that one to natural ease. And there we go. Lovely. We have the opening part. And now we want to do the floating bit. And let's just add a keyframe at 1.05. I'll explain later to why we're adding this, but for now, let's just add it. And at 2.2 seconds, let's adjust it to make it look like it's floating. So this one goes up, goes up, goes up as well. And there we go. Amazing. And at 3.6 seconds, I want the same look that we had on this frame right here. And we have a keyframe for it. For this one, we could just copy the keyframe and paste it at 3.6. But, but what you could also do is duplicate this keyframe. 
And to do that one, you basically just need to select the keyframe, hold Option or Alt if you're in Windows, and drag it to 3.6 seconds. And there we go. We've duplicated the same keyframe in a different point in time. So if we, if we play that back, there we go. That's the floating bit. And I want the same look as well at the very end of our animation. This one over here at the very end. So it closes back. Uh, amazing. Let's play the entire animation. And that's basically the animation for our main piece. But before moving on to the next part, let's adjust the easing for a little bit. I wanted to accelerate first, then decelerate. Slow down over here. And as it closes, goes back to natural. All right, cool. Amazing. And our main piece is being animated. Let's animate next the highlight because it's protruding right here. So let's animate our highlight. At one second, I want it to be the same look. Let's add a keyframe without changing anything. And at one, zero seconds, let's adjust the gradient handles. So over here, let's bring them out of view and bring it down like that. Cool, so play that back, goes up, amazing. Over here at 3.6, I want the same look without changing anything. So I'll just duplicate this keyframe over here, holding Option and dragging at 3.6. And at 4.2, I want the same keyframe over here with zero. So duplicate that keyframe at the very end of it as well. So if we open it, goes down, goes up, amazing. But okay, I want also wanna add an animation in between this. As it goes up, I want the gradient handle to go down. So let's do that one and play that back. Okay, down, up, and entirely down. Amazing. So let's adjust the easing. I'm gonna set this one to natural, set this one to accelerate, and then decelerate by the next part, slow down, then go back to our natural ease. Amazing. Okay, cool. We have basically animated our main piece and its highlight. The only thing left to animate is this data transfer right here, this data tunnel that we can see. Let me just hide this group. And yeah, this is the only part that's left to animate. So let's actually inspect our design again, our main animation. And as you can see, the color is being changed. And yeah, there's that simulation of a data transfer. Let's do the colors for now. Over here at data tunnel, we have a layer called tunnel color. This layer basically controls the color of our design. So over here, I want the same look. So I'll just add a keyframe without changing anything. But over here, at the very beginning, I want it to be dark. So I'll just change this one to black, turn it black, turn it black. And if we, all right, amazing, cool. So I'll just duplicate this keyframe right here for the color, 3.6. And this first keyframe, the very end of it as well. And we're basically just reversing the animation. All right, amazing. Cool. Now onto the next part, the data transfer part. So let's inspect our main animation. And as you can see, we have some color stops over here. And that's the only property that's being animated. As you can see, color stops are just changing in position. So let's do that one. Data transfer right here. I want the same look at 0.5 seconds. So I'm at a keyframe without changing anything. And at the very beginning, I'll move everything at the very start so that we could simulate that it's going in. And we wanna make this one as a perfect loop. So I'll keep the same colors at the, I'll keep the same colors on the edges of the artboard. So on the right edge, it's the white. On the left edge, it's this black stop right here. And we want that. Let me adjust this one quickly. We want it to be white. And on the other end, black, cool. So at one second, we wanna move everything to the other side. Move that one there, move here, move here and move this one over here and move the white over here. All right, cool. Okay, it's white over here and the other edge, we wanna make it black. All right, the black on that edge. So that's the same thing with our first frame, black over here, white over here, and our last frame, black over here, white over here. 
And that's basically it. At this point, at one second, we want everything to move back to the initial state. So I'm just gonna duplicate the first keyframe by holding Option or Alt and dragging it to 1.05. But there's an issue here. The issue that is that there's a transition in between this, and we don't want to we don't want to show the transition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the easing for this one to hold. What hold essentially is, it's basically saying your transition to immediately go to that value without showing the actual transition. So that's hold for you. And there seems to be an issue here. Why is it like that? Let's inspect it first and let's just adjust it. At the very edge, we want it to be white. Cool, uh, amazing. So there's that. Let's duplicate this look right here at 2.2 seconds. So holding option, dragging the keyframe at 2.2. And this look over here to 3.6 seconds. So holding option and dragging this keyframe to 3.6 seconds. Let's inspect our stops. Yep, that's how we want it. And yep, that's how we want it. So if we play this back, oops, there's an issue here. Why? It moved down. So what we want to do is that for this part, it's this one right here, this stop at the very end. So if we play this back now, it should be fixed. Amazing, cool. So let's deselect that one. Oops, we have an issue there. What was it? Oh, there's a transition. Did we not change it to hold? Oh, we didn't change it to hold. Let's change it to hold and that issue should be gone. Yep, there we go. Amazing. And yeah, this is basically it for the animation. But before we do, let me just adjust the easing for that one. It accelerates at the beginning, slows down at the very end. Accelerates at the beginning and slows down at the very end. There we go. Slow down. All right, so. Cool, amazing. This is it for our animation. What's left is to do the interactions. And to do the interactions, we basically need to head on to interactivity. It's this button right here. And oh, as you can see, I've already like assigned the states for it, but let me remove everything first and show you how to add our states and our interactions. So basically we need four states for this one. We need a state where it's not moving an idle state, a state where we introduce the animation, and a state where we need to loop the animation, and a state where we exit the animation. A state where it's not moving, an introduction state, a loop state, and an exit state. Cool. So how do we add states? It's this button right here to how we can add our states. So let's add a state. And let me just deselect anything. And okay, this state right here, let's name it to idle. Let's add another state and name the state entry. Another state named loop. And another state called exit. Amazing. So over here, the idle state, we want we want that section to be assigned to only zero seconds. We don't want it to move. So let's start from zero and at zero, it's not moving. But for the entry state, we want that state to be the opening part. And the opening part of our animation goes from, or was it main piece? It opens up until one second. All right. So up until one second, let's move this segment right here to one second. So the entry state will only play this section right here at one second. And the looping part, I can still recall it. It was, I don't recall it, 1.05 up until 3.6. So for that one, 1.05 to 3.6, 3.6. And let me just select the actual state and 1.05 over here. Just that one. There we go. 1.05, this is the looping section. And for this one, let's assign the looping to loop infinitely. All right, cool. So play this part over here. Loop, loop. But for some reason, our loop doesn't look right. Or is it just me tripping? The first part? Yeah, there's a bit of a dark in here. Let's adjust that one quickly in our anime mode. So over to this mode, the data transfer. Let's quickly adjust it. 
to over here because the last part is not showing any darkness in here. So, sorry, this is just me being very, very detailed about it. But you don't have to do this one. <laughs> All right, cool. So back to interactivity, we've set, we've assigned our loop and the only state that we need to assign is the exit state. And the exit state is basically going from 3.6 up until the very end of our timeline. So there we go. Let me just close that one. All right, that's a closing animation. Now it's time to add some interactions. And for this one, I want, we want to assign a shape. We want to assign a shape to add our interactions. And the shape that I'm going to be picking is actually the highlight. Whenever I hover over this area right here, or whenever I hover the highlight, I want the animation to be interactive. So over here on idle state, selecting the highlight shape, I want to add an interaction to it, a hover interaction. While being hovered, I want it to go to the entry state. For that one, I'll just assign a natural ease for it quickly. So when we hover over the highlight, it goes to entry state. And on entry state, what I want to do is that, like the time that we finish the animation in our entry state, I want it to instantly go to the looping state. All right. And with that one being set, let's actually preview it first. So if we hover, all right, cool. Now that's working. Amazing. So back to our editor, let's pick the highlight object and onto our loop. With the highlight object selected, when we leave the area, I want you to exit. I want you to go to the exit state. So natural, set it to 150. There we go. And on our exit state, what we want to do as we finish the animation in the exit state, we want it to immediately go to the idle state. Amazing. So if we do that one, let's actually preview that one first and see how that one goes. We have everything exit goes back. All right. Oops, we didn't add the on finish. Did we add it? Oh, no, it's just not being added at the moment. So let's uh, refresh it quickly and it should be there by now. There we go. We have the on finish, highlight the loop part. And if we hover out, on finish goes back to idle. Amazing. And that's basically how you do interactions within Lots of Lab. You add the state, you assign the states, and you apply the interactions to whatever elements that you want to add interactions to. And that basically ends our video. We've talked about how to take your designs from Figma to Lotte Lab, how to animate in Lotte Lab, and how to add interactions in Lotte Lab. And yeah, I hope you had fun in this tutorial. And please do share your work if you were follow along with this tutorial. And I hope to see you soon in the next video. And for the usual outro for like every usual video out there, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell icon to get notified with tutorials like this. And yeah, I hope you had fun. Keep saying that, but yeah. All right, bye-bye now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>